evening, ladies and gentlemen. I am Raymond Sarr, and I'm the director of the Performing Arts uh, School here at uh, the Drama Department here at D. Toledo High School. A big round of applause. Uh, I just want to say that, that we are very fortunate here because we have a, a, an administration that supports us beyond our wildest imagination. And it's really wonderful. And just so you know what tonight is all about, because we didn't do big advertisement, we do big things. To me, this is uh, what I call the spring flame. And they, we do the show, the fall show, the play so early, and then the musical so early in the year that they need something else to inspire them to to bring them up and to give them creative juices. So what we thought we'd do this year was a sort of a Saturday Night Live spoof. And because we had the talent, and because we had the time, and because it really will teach them about how comedy is done. And we have a lot of singers, and so it's gonna be a wonderful evening. So I wanna thank you for being here tonight. You're gonna to have a great time. So please enjoy Tuesday Night Live. <laughs> Today, we are going to be learning how to perform CPR. Now first, let's assess the situation. Is he breathing? No, Zoe, he is not breathing. And he has no arms or legs. That's not part of this class. I don't think you need arms or legs to do this. Well, Sammy, no arms and legs is basically how you exist now. You don't do anything. Not important today! <laughs> this is just a dummy just for use in this class. Now let's get back to it, because we are losing him, people! No, 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 that's way too fast, okay? You need to pump at 100 beats per minute. How many is that per hour? How does that help? I will divide it and then count to it. Right. No, a, a good trick is to pump to the tune of Staying Alive by the Bee Gees. Yeah, you yeah, know that tune? I love that song. Okay. <clears throat> First I was afraid, I was petrified. No, 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 no. It's, it's ah, 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 staying alive, staying alive. Yeah, yeah, I got it. Ha, 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 staying alive, staying alive. Ha, 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 staying alive, staying alive. Of the evening, 
meet Sean Walton. because I'm the first, the youngest, and the last person to host Ditalino's Tuesday Night Live. <laughs> Tonight, we are trying to pay tribute to Saturday Night Live. Now, you may be confused why it's on a Tuesday night. God forbid we do anything but a basketball homecoming game on a Saturday night. <laughs> Hashtag go Jews. <laughs> Now, I am so honored to be talking to such a great audience on a Tuesday night. You may not know, but I am the morning announcement speaker almost every morning. <laughs> Yard Den does try, but alas, his high-pitched voice gets a frequency only dogs can hear. <laughs> wow. But I know you will miss me so much when I'm gone, so I have recorded the next five years of morning announcements. <laughs> Ray says I get a little money off my college tuition out of the theater budget. <laughs> now, tonight we have a great show. Oh, I'm so excited. <sighs> but yes, so enjoy the amazing show. But let me just tell you, this is my 13th production on the Di Toledo stage. <laughs> the horrendous radio talk show I did freshman year. <laughs> I remember being on Zoom with my director in my room, having a little microphone right here on my bed, and I had to pretend I was getting a lobotomy done, like this. I am getting a lobotomy done! It I'm a senior too, and I'm not hosting tonight, so what is up with that? Ray knows talent. Mm, but clearly not beauty. <laughs> okay, so what even is Tuesday Night Live? Oh, let me guess. Another one of Ray's <coughs> stupid ideas. So true. <laughs> but seriously though, it's on. I did want to say, I've loved being at D Toledo with you for the past four years. Actually, do you remember in sophomore year when I played Mary Sunshine in Chicago? You were in that show? Okay, do you like not remember this wig? <laughs> Woo! Yeah! yeah. So no. Okay, so you have to remember these. <laughs> oh yeah! Oh no 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 no, it's on. Do you not remember what happened last time you tried to hug me while I was wearing these? Oh yeah! Oh, oh, no. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay, I'll be, I'll be okay. I'll be okay, okay, it's on, okay. I'll, I still love you, it's okay. You're done, I'm so happy that you like your new shirt, I mean. Thank it you, just, right? It, it fits you so right. good. Right, and the shade of black <laughs> matches, like, it just, it's just, it's such your color, time, right? it's so good for you. Thank you so much, yeah. I'm never taking this shirt off. I'm wearing it at graduation. Just so you know, Sorry. I'm wearing it at graduation. I love you, you're dead. Love you, meet son. Right. We're going to kill it tonight. We, we have the nation star, Abby! Forget my den. I'm your favorite. We've known each other for, what, three years now? Ah, four. But it seems like a lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> you are so funny. Well, at least I got to experience all of your greatest performances. Like Clue. Abby, wait a minute. I was a dead body the entire time during Clue. How is that my greatest performance? Simple. Watch this. Okay. okay, okay, pretty good. But get this, Abby. Stop like this. I really just 
love this shirt that you gave uh, me. I know. Give us a spin. Give us a spin. No, I'm just ah. never taking it off. <laughs> yeah. You know, now that now that you're graduating, just remember, I'm always your favorite. Sure. Yeah. All right. We have a great show for you tonight with musical guests. Well, frankly, too many to mention. So please. Enjoy Tuesday Night Live! <laughs> So what's your favorite part of D Toledo? The DTHS Jad Moms, obviously. Oh, 
cherries or roses or berries. What you gonna do? Suppose that he says that you're sweeter than cream and he's gotta have cream or die. What you gonna do when he talks that way? Spin in his eye. I'm just a girl who can't say no. Can't say to say it at all. I hate to disappoint a bow when he's paying a call. When I think of that old golden rule, and do for him for we to do for me. I think of that old golden rule, and do for him what he would do for me. Well, you see, that's exactly why I'm here. To listen and to help you hear each other. That is music to my ears, Doctor. Now, what am I feeling? I feel neglected. The kids feel neglected. Gary works late, he works weekends, and when he's not working, he's out golfing. Mm, I see. Now, what's your handicap? Five. Five? No kidding, so is mine. We ought to play sometime. He takes no responsibility at home. It's as if he's a complete stranger. He treats the house like it's a hotel. Yeah, yeah, it's my fault. It's always my fault. Honey, I'm just trying to explain to Dr. Mazur Look, that honey, I'm... Dr. Mazur doesn't need anything explained to him, okay? <laughs> now, Gary, I'm sensing that you're feeling underappreciated. <laughs> yeah. They ought to appreciate me, now that you mention it, Dr. Mazur. Call me Dick if you want to. Dick, <laughs> I work hard for a living. Mm -hmm. You bust your butt, I'm sure. And I come home, and there's no, hi, honey, how are you, how was work? There's no food on the table, well, the house is a- Well, you come home at 3 a.m. Sweetheart, I... would you give it a rest? <laughs> now, we're saying, Gary, I was saying that I work hard and that I am, um, I, I work hard and that's the point. Long hours, your beat, you need a little sympathy, a little validation, and she doesn't seem to get it. I mean, with her, it's all me, me, me. Well, it just so happens that she finds it hard to sympathize with a man who thinks nothing of shooting skeet in the backyard. We have small children running around. Now, am I crazy to set up a few simple rules? Is this true, Gary? You shoot skeet in your own backyard? Well, Jason loves it. Justin! Your son's <laughs> name is Justin! Okay, Jason, Justin, what's the difference? <laughs> now, uh, I mean, you shoot, shoot skeet in your own backyard. What kind of targets do you use? Well, I just bought a flock of clay pigeons the other day, and they're so good. Oh, have you ever tried plates? Oh, no comparison. 
I once also shot up a bunch of watermelons and some bites for the kids. Hey, 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 you sit your big fat butt down, okay? <laughs> Your pardon, doctor. I came here to salvage what is left of my marriage. Now, when he slinks home at all hours of the morning, stinking of gin and jungle gardenia, am I paranoid to think <coughs> that you're sleeping with your 23 year old secretary? Now, wait a minute. That's a very serious accusation. Is this true, Gary? Well, actually, she's 22! <laughs> I knew it! I knew it! I knew I'm not imagining things! I knew it, I knew it, I knew I'm not imagining things. Rissy is unbelievable, man. She thinks that I am a god. What? Yeah, legs up to like here? Yeah, and hooters are just, whoa! Whoa! <laughs> okay. Okay, I gotta apologize, because we're getting a little off the subject. Aren't we? Let's use the old democratic process. Shall we? I didn't do that. Why don't all of us that say Gary is right and she is wrong, uh, why don't we just raise our hands right now? Gary! 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 Stop it! This is not exactly the objective forum I was seeking when I decided to get some marital help. I will leave you now to measure your penises. <laughs> Good day. <laughs> Do you think the Dodgers made the right decision rehiring Clayton Kershaw? No, 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 no. I just think it was a pity rehire. <laughs> this next song is a pivotal moment in the show, The Little Shop of Horrors, that proves the power of love. Here is Ryan Holtzman and Zeb Zilberstein singing Suddenly Seymour. <laughs> your lipstick away. Show me your face, clean as the morning. I know things were bad, but now they're okay.
well excused? <laughs> what am I? Just the president of the United States? Yeah. <laughs> oh, Mary, I love this part. What does she tell this jerk up? Yeah. Oh, you tell him, honey. Woo! express their newfound love for one another, all while knowing it may not last because Elphaba has become a fugitive. Here are Goldie Marmer and Zeev Zilberstein singing As Long As You're Mine. <laughs> across 
the square where a young Italian boy, Fabrizio, catches it. The two are instantly smitten. They're at the Uffizi Gallery where paintings of figures reaching out to Clara and resonates to yearnings of her own. Here is Abby Wissett singing The Beauty Is. <laughs> wanted to strike for better teaching conditions, but could not find a day due to the Jewish holidays. 
Now, here is your traffic report from the Detroit of Heading eastbound from IT to the art room, you may run into some bumper to bumper traffic. And coming from room 187 to 185, you will, you will experience a major slowdown due to a fight consisting of two sophomore girls. <laughs> Look at them go. It is believed that around 74% of the student body has gotten into at least two minor collisions in the De Toledo parking lot. And one of them was you, Nitsan, last week. Yes, Yarden, one of them was me, last week. Anyway, he had a report about the horrific student driving, a mom with her seventh kid in driver's ed direct. Karen, take it away. Hi, hi everyone, good morning. <clears throat> I know learning to drive can be such a big milestone for these kids, but as a parent, it's a pain in the tuchus. <laughs> it's impossible to make them a good driver. They either, they either drive way too close to the park, guys are on the medium. <laughs> oh my god. <sighs> Sorry, back to what I was saying. Okay, so, right. right. When I, I swear, when I'm in the car, I wish that there was a passenger break so I could just, you know, I, I don't want to die or anything. <sighs> okay, anyway. <sighs> so when my daughter was taking the driver's test, she hit a trash can, she ran over a raccoon on the sidewalk, and she ran, she drove right into a bright yellow pole in the Day Toledo parking lot. <laughs> Thank God school was in session. <sighs> okay, like I was saying, um, your daughter, when she oh, took her test. Oh, oh, of course, sorry. Her instructor, he, uh, it, it, it's, it's my husband's best friend who lives two blocks down. Anyway, he let her pass with blood on the bumper. Thank you, Mad Mom. No, I, I'm not finished. I'm really, I'm not Well, it seems you said enough for tonight. Well, how about you shut up, you beanstalk of a man? Why don't you go let her say you are so Security! 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 Keep your hands off of me! Please, I don't agree to stop of you! published reports in JAG Now, robotics genius Steve Silverstein has been romantically linked to his robot. <laughs> he denies the reports, claiming he does not have time for a girl because he's too stressed, carrying the whole robotics team on his back. <laughs> the only thing he is carrying on his back is hair color of a leprechaun. <laughs> and while performing in the Lanar Auditorium earlier this week to a packed audience, Raymond Sarr shocked the crowd by destroying the Spall Shrine of USC merch. <laughs> but most importantly, Raymond Sarr was performing to a packed audience. <laughs> Never happens. And finally tonight, we at Midweek Update salute to a fellow senior on his graduation. Yardan Edry is leaving D. Toledo to pursue horrible Horrible music. Nitsan, what the hell? I'm Nitsan Walkaway. And I'm your dad, Israel Edry. <laughs> Sorry, but you won't be seeing these beautiful and sexy faces on stage next year. So you are welcome for being able to experience the, the peak, peak of D Toledo Theater. Hasta luego! <laughs> So we thought it would be fun to show you one of those monologues. And the last person who came to the creative meeting was Zoe Kahn, so we gave her this monologue. <laughs> oh my god, I figured it out. Teenage life sucks. <laughs> I mean, that's it, OK? Once you hit 13, your life just goes and all the adults are like, I loved being a teenager. <laughs> sure. Okay. Well, this isn't the sunshine 70s anymore. <laughs> and all the young kids are like, I can't wait to be a teenager. Being older would be so much fun. <laughs> I'm so sorry, but 
know you don't. <laughs> you really don't. Okay, first, it all starts in middle school. I mean, it seems like once you become a teenager, all your friends just start to turn on you. I mean, it starts out normal, you know, you hang out and stuff, and then you leave. And then they start gossiping. <clears throat> oh my god, did you see Gretchen and Justin made out? Oh my god, yeah, I heard it was like definitely with tongue. <laughs> I don't even know it, Justin. And then there's puberty. I'm so, no, I'm actually not gonna talk about that one. And then, there's the deep, dark black hole of all teenage life. High school, okay? I mean, once you get there, everything just starts to fall apart. I mean, first, everyone expects you to be this pencil-thin stick Otherwise, you're considered fat. But then, once you are that thin, everyone just goes around spreading that you're anorexic. Okay, and then all throughout high school, it is nothing but college this and college that and, and the college counselors, okay? They are no help about it. I mean, nothing at all. They just go around saying, you fail, you lose, you better start memorizing the phrase. What rhymes with that? Oh, I hate that. I wish they'd die. Where was I? Oh my God, right. Life sucking. <laughs> Let me just, you know, I'm, I'm just, I'm so tired of complaining. So I'm just going to leave you with one last little thing. <coughs> Adults, you were wrong. And kids, get effing ready. I'm sure you've all heard of the Phantom of the Opera, but I've often wondered, whatever happened to Ral and Christine? Well, I finally found out. They married, spent most of Ral's fortune on therapy, and with his last bit of money, they opened a little tavern in the south of France. So this is Ral and Christine 57 and a half years after floating away on that little boat. Hello! Woohoo! Welcome, monsieur. Sit yourself down and meet the best innkeeper in town. As for the rest, all of the crooks looking their guests and cooking the books. Seldom do you see honest men like me, a gent of good intent who's content to be master of the house, dolling up with charm, ready with a hand in an open palm. Makes a little tale, tale, tells a saucy tale. Appreciate the love and love. Like do a friend a favor Doesn't cost me to be nice But everything is everything Cause everything has got a little price Hello Oh and this too <laughs> Welcome to your Sit yourself down and be the best in keeper in town. As for the rest, all of the crooks, looking the guests, looking the books. Here the goose is cooked. Oh, and here the fat is fried. And nothing's overlooked till I'm satisfied. Food beyond compare, food beyond belief. Mix it with some insia and pretend it's beef. Liver of a horse, kidney of a cat. Mixing up the sausages with this and cat. Got to do a friend a favor. Help me to be nice. But, but nothing gets me nothing. Everything has got a little price. <laughs> Darling! that I would meet a prince, but look what happened since. 
Master of the house isn't worth my spit. Comforter, philosopher, and lifelong shit. <laughs> Cunning little brain, regular vocher, thinks he's quite a lover, but there's not much there. What a cruel trick of nature, leaving me with such a louse. God knows how I've lasted living with this bastard in the house. Master of the house. Master and a half. Master of a philosopher. Don't make me laugh. Master of the house. God bless the landlord. Everybody bless his spouse. Everybody raise the glass. Raise it up for the master's mouth. Oh! Everybody raise the glass to the master of the house. all-woman production team. This song is about all the insecurities we all have felt while dating. Here is Aiden Rauch singing When He Sees Me. Guys, there's real things, usually facts and figures. When information's in its place, I'm in lies the guessing game. Guess what? I don't like guessing games or when I feel things. Before I know the feelings, how am I supposed to operate if I'm just tossed around by fate? Like, on an unexpected date! With a stranger who might talk too fast, or ask me questions about myself before I've decided that. He can ask me questions about myself, he might sit too close, or call the waiter by his first name, or eat Oreos. But eat the cookie before the cream But what scares me the most What scares me the most Is what if when he sees me What if he doesn't like it What if he runs the other way And I can't hide from it What happens then If when he knows me What if he's disappointed Give myself a way to only get it given back. I couldn't live with that. So I'm just fine inside my shell shaped mind. This way I get the best view. So when he sees me, I want him to. Why a certain suitor stands in line I've seen in movies, most made for television. You cannot be too careful when it comes to sharing your life. I could end up a miserable wife. He could be criminal, some sort of psychopath who escaped from an institution somewhere where they don't have How untrustworthy is that he could be less than kind Or even worse, he could be very nice with lovely eyes And make me laugh, come out of hiding What do I do with that, oh God? What if when he sees me, I like him many he knows it What if he opens up a door? Your eyes and ears behind the closed doors and crowded hallways of 
at D. Toledo High School. Do you ever wonder what your teenagers are talking about during lunch and bonus? Well, thanks to our next guest, you don't have to wonder any longer. Please welcome Patricia Diaz and Natalie Gomez. Thank you so much for having us, or should I say, Translation, we are still apartment hunting if anyone knows the place. <laughs> so, you two are professional lip readers. Yes, we pick up on extremely subtle lip movement and body language to decipher exactly what a person might be saying. That's how I know. You're insecure. Oh my god. I am. She's so good. <laughs> So, the first clip you guys will be deciphering is two teenage boys talking about their baseball game. This conversation is really interesting. His body language says that he is relaxed. And I know that when his mouth is moving, he's talking. Let's roll the clip. Oh my god, this is my ring from Tiffany. Alrighty, hey, so this is my bracelets from Gorgiana. So cute. I'm not sure. Oh, okay. This is my sweat set from Lululemon. Wow. Love ya. <laughs> That's incredible. <laughs> this is not an exact science. But we do believe we got it 100% correct. Sorry, but just to confirm, you two are professional lip readers? Yes. We have over 1,200 videos on TikTok. And how many followers? Less. <laughs> okay. The next clip we're going to be looking at is the teachers deciding how to grade someone's test. <laughs> oh my god, your stilettos last night. Oh yeah, the hot pink ones. They were just so hot. My feet are so bloated. Oh, oh and yeah. Your, and your wig. Beauty is pain. It looked almost real. Love, Love yeah. <laughs> I'm noticing that all of the clips end with Love Ya. Yes, it is true that 100% of some conversations do end in love ya. Sure, but a lot of the time that you guys are talking, their mouths are closed. Why are you doubting us? Do you have no respect for our deep body of work? Let's watch the last clip, which is two security guards deciding on how to protect our school. Mamma mia! Mamma mia! Shrek pizza and spaghetti! Mamma mia! I don't know! Mamma mia! I, I love, love ya! <laughs> well, this was brief on Jack TV. a musical featuring puppets, but using young adults who face real-world problems with uncertain solutions. Here is Sammy Gore singing Purpose. It's that little flame that lights a fire under your ass. Purpose, it keeps you going strong like a car with a full tank of gas. I was born. It's a sign. Ha! Ba -ba 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 -ba. I don't know how I'm going, but I'm gonna find my purpose. I don't know where I'm gonna look, but I'm Out. Don't want to wait. Got to make sure that my life will be great. I gotta find my purpose before it's too late. Pottery, pottery, pottery. 
number was originally supposed to be performed at our last production, but we are performing it tonight. This production, this number is student-led and student-directed, and here is Monster from Frozen. Okay. 
hit before. The storm is awake. The danger is real. My time's running out. Don't feel, don't feel. Fear will be your enemy, and death its consequence. That's what they once said to me. It's starting to make sense. All this pain and all this fear began because of me. Mr. Keir, Ms. Howard, Mr. Schmaltz, and Raymond Starr!